This video is going to be the first in a series of uh, videos where we take a look at how you can build your own 7-inch freestyle quadcopter. If this is your very first time building a quadcopter, 7-inch quadcopters are not the place to start. You should change this out into a 5-inch quadcopter build. There will only be two things that you will need to change, and that will be the motors that you use and the frame that you use. Everything else can stay the same. And once we get into the actual building, I'll explain exactly which ones you can get and why. To begin, we have here a 7-inch freestyle frame. It's got eight millimeter thick arms across the center plate here. It's something like 16 millimeters thick. The top and bottom plates are three millimeters each. It's a very robust frame. This is also an open source frame so you can go to Thingiverse and you can download the files and send them off to any place that will cut you carbon. Now I bought this one here in Canada from a place called CNC Drones. You can order it from them. Instead of getting the seven inch frame in this, just get the five and a half inch frame and you'll be set. So these are Emacs Eco 2s, 2807 stator size, and a 1300 KV. The reason I chose these, well, two main reasons. One, they're very affordable in terms of a motor of this size, and they're actually rated as being a very, very powerful, durable, good motor. Chris Roser did um, a number of tests on, on motors in this category and uh, even though it's not the most expensive these uh, Emacs motors came out at or near the top in almost every category he tested so for an affordable motor that is known to be a very good one uh, that's why I chose it instead of having 2807 motors you would drop down same company same brand Emacs Eco 2 and just get 2207 motors and choose the KV that you want. They're excellent motors as well, very affordable, but you just need a smaller size. To make everything fly, you need to have a flight controller. And so that's what we have here. We have a SpeedyB flight controller. And the reason I've chosen SpeedyB is affordability. For whatever reason, in the last number of years, SpeedyB has really kind of taken over the affordable market in terms of good quality, uh, flight controllers and uh, and ESCs. So I've got their F405. Works really well for anything you can fly right now. We've got a 55 amp, um, 3 to 6S, and this is a BL Heli S, not BL Heli 32. The fact that it's BL Heli S reduces the price a little bit. For the average Joe like me who flies, I'm not going to notice any difference in, in the flights um, that I have using a BL Heli S ESC and I'll save a lot of money instead of getting the BL Heli 32. This is a Speedy B F405 stack with the 55 amp ESC, and that's what's needed for the motors that we have over here. And the only other difference that maybe you could choose to make, but you don't need to, would be to get the Speedy B stack that is not 55 amps, but 40. And if you did that, you would save yourself a little bit of money as well. You don't need to. You can get the 55 amp one and it'll work absolutely fine. It'll just be a little bit more money than you would really need to spend. Let's talk about the control system here. So what we're going to use is Express LRS 2.4 gigahertz receiver, which we will be using. From there, just standard little camera, comes with the various wires and connectors that you need all inside. It's a Runcam Phoenix 2.1 millimeter lens on it and it's got power from 5 to 36 volts. With it of course we will need a video transmitter. I have two here. This particular quad when we build it's only got a 20 millimeter spacing in between for the whole stack and I'm not quite sure if I can build a triple stack inside there or not. If I can then I would use this Mamba um, VTX here. Then I'll switch over and I'll use the Speedy B. It happens to have a 20 by 20 
hole pattern that would fit back here. Alternatively, instead of the 20 millimeter standoffs that come with it standard, you can switch over and put in 25 millimeter standoffs to give yourself an extra half centimeter in there. It would absolutely give you the space to to make a three high stack. This frame, like many, doesn't have any side panels where the cameras go. And so what you need as well are some printed camera mounts that fit onto your standoffs like that. You'll need a, an FPV antenna of some kind. I happen to have some Fox here lollipops kicking around. They're certainly um, affordable and they do the trick for what you need them to do. This is going to be a six cell LiPo battery ranging from about 1800 milliamp hours up to 22 or 2300 milliamp hours and as high a C rating as you can possibly get. That's what we have here. We have a, a six cell battery, three, four, five, six. It's 2200 milliamp hours. And when we line it up onto the quad, we can see that it just fits exactly as it should and there's still space in the front for a GoPro afterwards. What we've talked about so far are all of the different components and uh, the various pieces that we would use in order to build this. So what we should probably take a look at next are the tools and pieces that you're going to need in order to actually do the build. So let's clear up here a little bit and uh, bring in some of the things that we're going to need and talk about those next.